Good afternoon po sa bawat isa. Good afternoon. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Tuloy nga ang Panginoon ay napakabuti sa ating mga buhay. Amen? At patuloy po naman natin maranasan ang pag-ibig at kapayapangan na nagmumula sa ating Panginoon. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this moment. You welcome for your Holy Spirit in this place. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we honor you, we adore you, we worship your holy name. We come here as we as we are lifting up our voices in, in our life. Let our lives be truly surrendered to you, O oh God. We thank you for this faithfulness, O oh God. And we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We give you highest praises, glory, honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I will call to worship reading for the day. It's taken from Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Amen? Amen. Indeed. For our God, He is a great God, He is a handsome God, and He is a powerful God. Then 
bearing the peace, hope, healing, and freedom. Let us speak the name of Jesus and truth in the power, in His power and authority.
parents speak Thai, we'll have a English, English uh, 80% English. <laughs> so praise God. Uh, <coughs> we we started uh, on on the on series on unchanging principles in changing times last week we talked about the changing times and season and now let us look on the principles that we need as we live in the changing time huh? so Nung, nung sa linggo, no? uh, nag-upisa tayo doon sa pagbabago ng panahon. Okay. And the first that we want to discuss is something to do with honor. Giving and receiving honor. Okay. The, one of the unchanging principle and very practical para sa atin lahat, for all of us, is the concept and living honorably and learning to give and receive honor. Okay. Now, of course, when we talk honor, we talk about God Himself. The Lord is worthy of honor. Okay. Psalms 96 verse 6 said, Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. And then in Revelations 4.11, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things by your will, they exist and were created. Now, these two verses talks about how to honor. One is, in Psalms 96, the, they are honoring God because of who He is. That honor and majesty are before Him. Now, that His strength and beauty are in His sanctuary. His stature, who He is, He is worthy of honor. Now, in Revelation 4.11, he is honoring him for what he had done. He, he said, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. One is about the person, one is about his action or what he had done, that he had created all things. And with these two things, we declare that the Lord is worthy of honor. Nakarapat dapat purihin. Karapat dapat parangalan ang Diyos. Second, that God receives, He receives, yet He also bestows honor. Those who honor me, I will honor. In 1 Samuel 2 verse 30, it was declared that He who honor Him, now, Pagka pinasa natin yung, yung, yung text na yun, it's something to do with an honorable action doon sa isang family. But this is also a declaration for all of us that as we serve God, we should honor Him. And then in Psalms 84 verse 11, For the Lord God is the sun and shield, the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things that He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. The Lord bestows. He gives. He is the one who promotes. Promotion does not come from the east nor the west. Promotion comes from God. Amen. And being honored is being promoted. So God receives, God deserves honors, but we as His servant, we seek His honor and to be honored by Him. That should be clear to us. Now as believers, we are called His. 
we are owned by our Lord. And therefore, we are to live to honor the Lord. In Romans 14, verse 8, we honor God with our life. It said here in Romans 14, verse 8, if we live, it's to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. Amen. Whether we live or die, the purpose is to honor the Lord. Now we belong to God and we should look forward to a day when he said, Welcome, good and faithful servant. And how can we be faithful? We can become faithful if our motivation and action leads to honoring God. We should live a life that honors God. And even in our death, we should seek to honor God. Even in our death. And that's that's what we are called for. We are called to be witnesses. And the word witness comes from the word martyr, where martyr also came. We are called to be an honor, to give honor, to become martyrs for God. And that is to die in honor of the Lord. Second, we have to honor our God with our body. As long as we are living, we are honoring God. Why? Because we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus. <coughs> we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Whenever we look at the cross, whenever we look at who Jesus is, the Creator, He is before all things. All things were created by Him and for Him. And because of the love of God for us, He gave us His Son. He gave us Jesus. We were bought at the price. Salvation is free for us, but it is not free. Jesus paid for it. Amen. So we were bought at a price, therefore we should honor God with our body. How we live our life, we honor God with our body. We ourselves is a living sacrifice. We ourselves should be the expression of worship. Huh? How we live our life should be expression of worship, expression Amen. of gratitude. Amen. And that's how we honor God. Third is we honor God with our wealth. Honor the Lord with your wealth and our promises following that as we honor the Lord. Now, there are so many things how we can live a life that honors the Lord. Okay. Now the word honor, the word, the English word honor in the New Testament came from two Greek words. One is doxaso and one is timao. Doxaso is where the word doxology came. Doxaso means to glorify. And in English it is rendered honor. It is rendered to glorify. Have glory or be made Lord glorious. It refers to God's visible splendor. It refers to God's presence. When you say, oh Lord, I honor you. You are honoring that God is present here. Amen. You are honoring that God is manifesting his glory. Lord, I honor you because I see your Working, I see your hand working in my life, Lord. I honor you, Lord. I honor you because of your love, Lord. I honor you because of your power working in me, Lord. I honor you because of who you are. Now that is doxaso. The second is timao. That means to honor. It means to give the proper work 
the proper price, the proper value or respect. This is an evaluation of a person's action which determines a person's worth or value or community of what, or what he or she achieved. And most of us are familiar with honors. No? <laughs> and that is the how. Huh? So that there's two kinds of honor. One is doxaso, one is Dima. Doxaso is honors that is vertical, going towards God. And the second is Timau, which is horizontal, that we give and we receive from fellow men. Okay. So, now, where does these two meet? Saan nagkita ito? Dalawa na ito. One is the vertical honor, and one is horizontal honor. It met at the cross. At the cross, the honor that God deserves and the honor that man should receive met at the cross. At the cross, we see the value of soul. We see the value of man. Christ died in our place, the holy for the ungodly. Christ died died instead of us yes. dying Amen. paying Christ paid for the debts that he now in Romans 5 6 to 21 Paul discusses there how much God loves us and how much did Christ show his love for us? We are loved by God. That is our work. He bought at us at a high price and he reconciled us back to God. That's how valuable we are. Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross, breaking the power of sin so we can live in his righteousness. Jesus lived a righteous life so that we who are unrighteous, who believes in him, can become righteous. Amen. Now we are righteous. Amen. Not because of what we did, but because of what Christ did at Calvary. Amen. Matutuwid ho tayo, hindi dahil sa gawa natin, because doon sa ginawa ni Jesus. Amen. And we should look always at the mirror, looking at the man that Christ ransomed at Calvary. Ni ransom na tayo. That's how precious we are in God, God's sight. Hello? Amen. Now, once we grasp this truth, Our mind will be renewed. Amen. That's why in Romans 12, we should renew our mind. We renew our mind. We should see ourselves how God see us now. We were made righteous by the righteous one. Amen. We were loved. The godly died for the ungodly. Amen? Amen. Now, once we understand that revelation, once we understand that truth, sin will lose its grip. Why? We will know that indeed we are precious in God's sight. Amen. Indeed, we are the apples of God's eye. Indeed, that when 
the enemy attack us, it does not only attack us, it, all, it also attack Jesus Christ. Remember Paul. Remember Paul. Jesus met him. Jesus told him, why are you persecuting me? Did Paul persecute Jesus Christ? No. Paul persecuted the Christian. But the truth is, once you persecute the Christian, you are persecuting Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And that's how precious we are in God's sight. At the cross. Now you see at the cross, we see the honor that belongs to God, and we see how God bestows honor to those who will believe in Him. At the cross, the vertical and the horizontal met at the cross. The honor that belongs to God and the honor that man will receive at the cross. The doxaso and the timau met. Amen. Amen. So now, we will discuss on how we will give honors to people. And let us look again to John 10.10. 10. I'm, I'm using today's English version. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Now, life in its fullness is life according to our true word. Life in its fullness is living according to its true word. I have here a cell phone. It's valuable to me as of now. But once it is destroyed, that the value of this will change because it's no longer useful to me. You understand it? Yes. Yes. The enemy wants to devalue us by destroying us. The enemy wants to destroy us through temptation and sin. And that's big. we became unhonorable. Huh? The honors that we should have is no longer once we are destroyed. That, that's what the enemy wants us to be. I have come in order that you may have life, life in its fullness. Yung ating true word na importante Now, as believers, we are to honor God and people as well. First Peter 2 verse 17 says, Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. In Romans 13 verse 7, Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So as believers, we are to honor God. And it's easy. But sometimes in honoring God, we dishonor people. Sometimes in honoring God, religiously, people dishonor people. How? Can we see it in the Bible now? Remember, Jesus Christ healing the sick during the time of Sabbath. The religious leader cannot see the value of man. No, hindi nila makita yung mahalagat niya. Ang mahalaga follow the, the law. 
And Jesus declared, Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's how valuable we are to God. Even if religious people don't value us, God values us. Amen. 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 Remember the crippled for how many years? He cannot live life in its fullness because of his sickness. But because of Christ and because of the grace of God working in him, that crippled was able to walk. And what, the, what did the religious people do? Did? did they rejoice? Oh, oh, the crippled walk? No. They criticize him. They want to seize him. They want to punish him for walking and with, with his tampipi during the time of Sabbath. They cannot rejoice that the man is now back his true value. No, hindi kita ko natin. Ang kaaway, gusto tayong sirain. The enemy wants to destroy us. God wants to restore us to our true Amen. value. Amen. To our true worth. Napakahalaga mo. Napakahalaga mo para sirain mo ang buhay mo sa masamang bisyo. <clears throat> Napakahalaga mo para sirain mo ang sarili mo sa relasyon na nakakasira sa iyo. And if we receive that revelation that we, that God has invested so much to us, that God has given His only begotten Son, so that we could live a life that is righteous. We could, have, we could have that fullness of life. That we could have true liberty from the power of sin. From the power of darkness. We could live the life that we should be living. A life that is after God's design. That is living true values. Amen. 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 So, so now we could start the message. <laughs> That's the introduction. <laughs> now let us give honor. Now, so, now the Bible said, Peter said that we give honor to the king and honor to all people. Now, what we will discuss is honor, honoring the people that is around us. It is easy to honor the king because he is king or the president. And it's also easy to say that we honor all people. But how about the people who is close to us? That's where we will begin. First, the Bible said we should honor our parents. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Oh, but Pastor, that is in Old Testament. Now, let us read it in, in, in New Testament. Honor your father and mother. Which is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Amen. God wants us to enjoy long life. Now, it doesn't say there that you will have long life. Because we can have long life we could be living a hundred years, 150 years, but the question is, are we enjoying our existence? It is different. We can live a long life, but bedridden. Why cannot? 
Para mamatay. Do you enjoy life? Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment. And as believers, we should tell it. We should reflect this. Maaring sa iba sa atin, huli na. Kasi wala na si papa at si mama. Umalis na. But to our children, so that their children's children will honor them. Honor our father and mother. We have a generation now, uh, today's generation, that live this honorably and they are not honoring their parents. And the enemy is rejoicing about that. Why? Yeah. Because honoring the parents have promise. Blessing also. No? Yeah. Kasi pag hindi mo inonor yung parents mo, tinulungan mo na yung kaaway para sa kanyang pahinira. Kasi may balik yun eh, di ba? Because the promise is that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life. Long life. Where? On heaven? No, here. here on earth. There is a promise here yes. that you may enjoy long life where? On, on earth. earth. Yes. Amen? Amen. We may enjoy long life in here if we should honor our parents. Second, honor our spouse. Honor our spouse. Hebrews 13 verse 4, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Now, it is said here, marriage should be honored by all, not only by the couple, but the people around them. Yeah. Including the in-laws. The in-law should honor the marriage. They should help in keeping the relationship. Marriage should be honored by all. By the brethren. Kaya pagka merong nag-ano sa inyo, huwag yung, huli mo niya. <laughs> no, we should help in in honoring the marriage because marriage is not invented by man. Marriage was instituted instituted by God Himself. Marriage was started by God. He is the origin of marriage. Yes, we are the bride. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, in 1 Peter 3, 7, this is for the husband. Husband, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel as and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, for husband, tila yung husband dito. <laughs> for husband, for us, husband, for us, male. Uh, single parents, pastor. <laughs> Once we dishonor the vow of marriage, or once we are dishonored, once we are dishonoring our mate, we are putting hindrances in our prayers. Okay. Guilt will come. Huh? So that's why we, we, we should take everything off that, we, that could hinder or that could mar our marriage. Prayers may not be hindered. Papano raw? By honoring 
are why. Of course, that will go. That also applicable to the ladies, to the wives. You should honor your husband. So honoring marriage has effect on our spiritual life. Dapat alam po natin ang paraan. <laughs> para para wala kang dahilan at wala kang kakayanan manibang bahay that's for me three honor our spiritual leaders 1 Timothy 5 verse 17 to 18 elders who do their work well should be respected and paid well especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching for the scripture says you must not muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain and in another place those who work deserve their pay now there are there are churches that do, don't honor their spiritual leaders. And, and we are grateful. I am grateful to, to the eldership of TIC as they honor their leaders, their spiritual leaders. But there are churches who don't. There are local churches who don't. And somehow it has an effect on the whole church. Because pastor and leaders are gift of Christ to his body. body. Okay? Minister. They give accounts to God, they give accounts to the shepherd who is Jesus Christ as they shepherd the flocks or the local church that they are assigned to. Okay. Four. Among our horizontals, honor our employers. Ephesians 6 verse 5, those who are employed should listen to their employers mm -hmm. and obey their instruction with great respect, respect and honor. Mm -hmm. Serve them with humility in your heart as though you were working for the master. The word master there is as if you are working for the Lord. But pastor, I'm much better than my employer. <laughs> I'm much brighter than my employer. <laughs> no, the Bible said respect. Honor. Why? Because you are being trained. Remember Daniel. Daniel respected the process. That he was in. He respected the people that is above him. And in due time, God raised him up. God Amen. raised Daniel Amen. in proper time. Amen. Promotion comes from God. Amen. And we should honor the institution that he gave. There are people who are suffering now because of their dishonoring the employers. Huh? There are people who suffer because of what they did. It's their choice. Remember the Remember, uh, I remember around 1980s, 80s, uh, around 80s, Adidas used to have a shoe factory in Novaliches. And the people there are enjoying the benefits, so many benefits. And then, uh, a, group, a labor group came into 
and to Adidas and form a group and they protested for law for for long period of time and they had this close. And how many families were affected? And then they shipped out from the Philippines. Right? Because it became costly to them. The people are not working, they need to pay for pay them. And the, the enemy comes to destroy. Okay? The enemy comes to destroy. Pip, honor our employees. Okay. Ephesians 6 verse 9. You master act on the same principle toward them and give up threatening and using violent and abusive words, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and that there is no respect of person, no partiality with him. Okay? So, kung ikaw ay employer, that doesn't mean you have authority over, uh, full authority over your employees. Why? Because you yourself is servant of God. And you are not the owner, but instead, you are just a manager. We are all stewards. If God gave us business, it is for us to Manage. become stewards, faithful stewards. And we serve God through our businesses. And by serving God, we should also look at our co-workers as part of being truthful and faithful managers of God's resources. Mm -hmm. So we see ourselves Pag-uwi niyo sa Pilipinas, baka maging multi-millionaire multi kayo. May mga pabrika kayo. <laughs> Amen. God is the one who give that and it is His. You are just managing the resources that He gave you. Amen. Amen. He who is both their masters and yours is in heaven. Second, why we honor our employees is we remember the cross. In Colossians 3.11, this is what Paul said, In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free, Christ is all that matters and He lives in all of us. Whether we are employee or employers, whether we are poor or rich, whether we are young or old, Christ lives in all of us. Amen. And that's why we are valuable. We become a vessel of honors. Not because we are precious, but because the one who lives in us is the owner of everything, the kings of king, the king of kings and the lord of lords is living inside of us. Amen. Amen. And we should honor once we are once God gave us the opportunity to lead, once God gave us to the opportunity to manage, to own a business, let us see to it that we honor the people that He gave us as employees. Amen? Amen. And honoring our employees means giving what is rightfully for them. Amen. <coughs> uh, 
if they have, if they have SSS, you give it, you you pay for their SSS for their fun TV, for their oh, for their ill health, and you give what is proper, what is due to our employees, and that is honorary, no? And then. <coughs> The proper use of words, not threatening words, not violent words, not abusive words, but words that construct, that words that can build up, words that can motivate them to work with you harmoniously. Amen? Mm. Honor our employees future business people. Honor your future employees. Amen? Amen. Those who can be trusted in little can be trusted. In much bigger things. Amen. Amen. And then we go to our peers in the church. Honor our spiritual brothers and sisters. Romans 12 verse 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Yes. Amen? Mommy, I'm in meeting. Everyone has ideas, good ideas. How we apply this? You you listen, listen to the ideas of others. Why? Because we may gain wisdom by listening. That is not only looking at your own interests, mm -hmm. but on the interests of all of us. For all of us. Amen. Amen. <coughs> we should honor our brethren even in the midst of differences. We will have differences. Once we read the Romans 14 and Romans 13, we will can see difference. In Romans 14, the difference of uh, about food. What? Some can only some only wants vegetables. Others can eat everything. And then they measure their spirituality on what they can eat or can or what they don't eat. We will have different ta tastes. We will have different ta tastes of music, tastes of music. Others want, oh, if the, if the song are hymnals, then it is heavenly. <laughs> no. And, oh, if it's, if it's, if it's not, uh, if it's not a uh, hill song, it's so boring. We, we, we label other believers. Oh, they are not clapping their hands, they are dead. <laughs> we have different tastes and we, we have different uh, way of showing how we honor God. And we should respect those differences and learn from those differences. Amen? Amen? Why? Because of the cross. Our value, our real value, was declared at the cross. Amen. At the cross. Amen. Not about on the food that we place in our mouth. 
not on the music, not on the bigness of the congregation. Our work was declared by God Himself at the cross. Amen. At the cross. At the cross we are valuable Amen. because we are paid at the expense of the only begotten Son of God. That's how valuable we are to God. Amen. That's how valuable our sisters, our brothers, and that's why we should honor them because in God's sight they are precious. Amen? Amen. We should honor our spiritual brothers and sisters. There will always be differences in the manner we dress, in the manner we speak. In the, there will always be differences. But those differences should complement we are not competing against each other. Amen. We should complement as one body. Amen. 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 We should respect one another. Amen. And the last is the respect that we should give ourselves. On our own. We should be, we should honor our words. Amen. Learn to honor our words. Amen. That's why in Ecclesiastes, once you read Ecclesiastes, the wise man said, don't, don't utter foolish things. Don't give rash words once you are in front of God. Why? Because we should honor our words. But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your uh, let yes. your yes be yes Amen. and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Now in the book of James said, you just tell, God willing, we will do this. God willing. Kung loloobin ang Diyos, pupunta kami doon. Kung loloobin ang Diyos, makakadalaw kami sa inyo. Hindi, Pastor, punta ka na sa amin. Kung loloobin ang Diyos, at kung bibigyan mo kami ng air ticket, pa, punta kami sa amin. Hindi na masakit. Huwag na yung air ticket. Kung loloobin ng Diyos, why? Because we don't know how long yeah. our life is. Our life is like a mist. It is here today and gone tomorrow. Let us honor our words. If people know how to honor their word, maraming masisiyahan. Lalo na yung intangan. Eh sabi ko naman, katapusan. O saan, katapusan na ngayon na. Ng buwan. Hindi, katapusan ng taon. Linawin. We should honor our words. Honor our words. Because by honoring our words, we are honoring ourselves. Amen. Because like God, His word and Him cannot be separated. That is called His integrity. The integrity of the word of God. God, we can trust God because what He says, He will do. What He promised, He will, he will do. do. Amen. And now we are created after His own likeness. And we are now children of God. Our pattern 
should be like our Father. Meron siyang isang salita. Amen. Amen. Let us honor our words because by honoring our words, we are honoring not other people, but we are honoring ourselves. Amen. Amen. So now, that is to whom we give honors. But how we give, how we receive honors? What is our attitude when we are being honored? Let us remember that God bestows wealth, He bestows riches, and He bestows honor. In Second Chronicles, we can read here, God said to Solomon, Since this is your heart's desire, and you have not asked for wealth, riches, or honor, nor for the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge, to govern my people over whom I have made you king, therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given you, and I will also give you wealth, riches, and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had, and none after you will have. Remember, God bestows honor. So, what should be our attitude when we are honored here on earth? Next. There are three attitudes that we should have. One is... Next, please. Next is be wise. Let us discern our season. Let us be wise. Once we are honored now, remember uh, Queen Esther. He became a queen. Now in Esther chapter 2 verse 10, it was said that he, she didn't reveal her true identity. Mordecai said, don't reveal that you are a Jew. Okay? But now, in, in our time, if people were honored or you were given a certificate, you just post it on Facebook. <laughs> post it. Right you were now. given a bonus, you post it. And then, and then, people will ask, Oh, kumusta ka mare? <laughs> Birthday na na anak mo. <laughs> Be wise. Amen. Discern if it's the right season to do it. for you to make it public. Mm. Remember Esther. There is time and season for everything. And she yes. was wise to follow the advice of Mordecai. Yeah. Remember Mordecai? Yes. Mordecai said, don't reveal to them your true identity. Huh? But now, so easy. everything is in open. 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 No. You have Twitter, you have Facebook, you have Instagram. Be wise. Because, because there are times that we, there will be a time, a specific time, where you can use the honor that you receive. Amen. You, you post, oh, I am graduate of Master Al. And then what will happen? People will start to scrutinize you. Second, make it as a platform 
to give glory to God and so that you can, can point people to Him. Just like Daniel. When Daniel was honored, he gave glory to God. And then he gave back the glory to Him. By giving back the glory to God, he pointed people to God, especially the king, that there is but one God who made heaven and earth, that He is the God who changes the times and the season. He can change, He can remove kings and He could replace a new king. Daniel made his honor as a platform to glorify God. Amen? Once you are honored, glorify God. Amen. Ito ang mapagkakatiwalaan pala itong aking kasambahin na ito. Eh kasi alam mo naman talaga, basta, basta galing Basta galing sa probinsya ng Timbuktu, mahuhusay ka. Nalang po ang mga taga-Timbuktu lang pala mahuhusay. Pwede na ako sa story pa yun si Timbuktu at si God. Or you can say, Oh, because the Lord changed me. God is the one who guides me. Now the glory... Now you are already giving the honor to God. You are honored by your employer, and now you are you have a platform to give glory to God. And by giving glory back to God, you are pointing people to Him. Amen. 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 So once you are honored, you make that as a platform to glorify God and to honor and point people back to God. Amen. Not me, but God. Yes. And third, remember that is that we are all servants of God. That is yes. just our privilege. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. If our desire is to honor Jesus, we will always see the opportunity where we can serve Him. Amen. Oh, I'm just working inside our home. Remember the leprous Naaman? Remember? No? The helper of Naaman. Oh, we have a prophet in Israel. We have a prophet in Israel. You see? She knows her God. And she knows the purpose why she is working as domestic worker to... A military officer. That, that's also how Joseph was. Joseph see the opportunity because he decided to live to honor God. Once we decide to live a life that will glorify and honor God, we will see the opportunity once it's open. Amen? Amen. We are servant of God. So the challenge today is we we choose to be a vessel of honor. We can only give what we have. We can only give what we have. And what we have is Jesus Christ himself. He is now living in us, with us. He is our Emmanuel. When, when Peter and John met the crippled man at the gate beautiful, Peter and John said, Silver and gold we have none, but such as we have, 
we give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Rise up and walk. Yeah. What they have, whom they have, they have faith and they have Jesus. And in the name of Jesus Christ, they become vessel for honor. Amen. Second <coughs> Timothy two verse twenty to twenty two says, "But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master." Prepared for every good work. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us see. Let us look at the cross. At the cross, we can see how God loves us. Amen. How we are precious in His sight. Amen. At the cross, we can learn that we can honor our brothers. We can learn to honor all people. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for all. Yes, we give you glory, Lord. Irregardless of race, irregardless of social status, Regardless whether they are slave, whether they are man or man or female, in Christ we are all equal. And that's what we should we, sh we should honor that, and by honoring that, we should desire to become a a vessel Vessel's for honor. Amen. Where Christ lives and where the gospel will be communicated. In our lives, the gospel will be communicated. What Amen. is that gospel? The love of God. The sacrifice of Christ. That, that through Christ, man could live in all life's fullness. And that life's fullness doesn't always mean money, it all it all means your true word. Your true word sa Panginoon. No? Sa, sa Panginoon. Our true word. Then, once we know it, we pwede natin maibigay ang lahat o matanggap ang lahat. Pagka na, alam na natin yon, may kita natin, Lord, lahat pala na ito, pinagkatiwala mo sa akin, at pinagkatiwala mo sa akin. Anytime pe pwede mong kuhain, anytime pe pwede mong pagyamanin. Whether mawalan o pagyamanin, lahat ng yon ay para sa kalwalatian ng Diyos. Amen. Whether ako ay batuhin, o ako ay ikulong, Lahat ng yun ay para sa Panginoon. Amen. Lahat ay pagsa, sa paghahari ng Panginoon. Amen. I will live a life that will honor God. Amen, Lord. And my life will be a vessel of honor. Yes, Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we praise you and we honor you. Lord, cleanse us from all things that will hinder us to live a life that is honorable. Father, we pray that your grace will open our eyes to see, so we could see, Lord, how you love us how you cared for us, how you treasured us, and how you placed us in your hands. 
and that no one could let us out from your hand. Yes, yes. That you are fighting for us because we are we, we are valuable to you. Okay? Yes, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we, we pray, oh Lord God, that this truth will be planted in our hearts and minds. We pray, O oh Lord, that this truth, O oh Lord, will be deposited in our hearts, O oh God, that we may become a vessel of honor, that we receive the honor that you gave us by making us a co-heirs of Christ, by making us your children, and by making us a vessel of the gospel so that our lives also could communicate your goodness, your forgiveness, could communicate the cross to people around us. Father, teach us to honor people around us. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.